He had two children, uh, Paul and Heather. One was five and one was three. Uh, I don't need to tell you the devastation that we had to deal with going into that family home on a Sunday morning when two children were asking why their daddy is not there. Um, that was uh, the provisional IRA. Uh, there were three shooters involved. Uh, I remember that um, the early hours of Sunday morning when my brother came to tell me that he had been shot dead. Um, my father worked, uh, he was a joiner and a building contractor. He knew quite a lot of people, business people and ordinary folk around the Billy area. And I don't think you'll find one person who could say a wrong word about him. He was um, tried to do as much as he could for the general public. If he could help them out in any way, definitely he would have done it. <laughs> They were absolute angels, honestly, mm. and uh, they were very productive, very healthy, and then they were gone. This morning it was clear just how desperately Mrs. Hazel had tried to evade her killers. She'd reversed her sile frantically until it crashed into a tree. After that, there was no escape. I shot my aunt with a Kalashnikov. Twelve bullets entered her upper torso, pierced through her heart, her lungs, her liver, and, and she died. So, yeah. You know, for a long time my family was thinking why and if we only had a chance to meet them ever we would ask them why I don't want to ask them why because there's no justification there's no justification for for murdering people of people which are not deserving of the seats they have now in politics Stephen Parker's parents faced the ordeal of identifying his body my wife waited outside body was very badly his face, uh, head, uh, was very badly, um, you know, um, well uh, disfigured, and um, but it wasn't possible to recognise him as my son. I felt sorry for the man in the mortuary. He came up and he said, "I don't think that's your son." I said, "Look in the pockets," and um, of course he pulled out a box of safety matches. And I looked, of course, Stephen had fooled me two nights before. He was always buying these trick games and so on. They were joke matches? Joke matches, yes. The dead man's commanding officer described him as a fine soldier. Uh, he had a good military career ahead of him. His, his, his private life was, was well organized. He was intending to marry in the not too distant future. Uh, so really, it, it, it's a tremendous blow, obviously, to his family, uh, as well as to the regiment. Samuel heard a shot and he thought at first that his father was shooting crows and then when he realized that his father's shotgun was still in his bedroom he, he realized then something was wrong and he got up put on his slippers and his dressing gown and he went, when he went to the window he saw the person who had committed the crime driving away in the car in his father's car my father was a contracts manager for Henry Brothers Henry Brothers were a company that carried out work on security force bases throughout Northern Ireland About two or three days later, and I remember this as clear as day, I had to go to Force the Green to identify my father's body. And that is an image that will stay with me till the day I die. It was just a look of shock, the look of horror on his face. Uh, and it's just no one, I, I wouldn't wish anyone to, to have to go through that. Elizabeth was her only daughter, only child. And it's only natural that uh, if you have two people in your life one minute and the next minute they've gone, uh, you just don't know how it's going to affect you. For us, the whole of 1978 was a really a blank year. I can honestly say that it was months before I started to come round.
the Crawford's son-in-law, who'd been critically injured in a car crash two years beforehand, had it later emerged actually escaped from the blaze, but went back inside in search of his wife. Daddy was 22 when he was murdered by the IRA in Argo. And he was doing something different every day, that's what he loved. Because one day he could have been picking litter up, or the next day he could have been cutting the grass, or out in the bin lorries. And um, he was out in the bin lorries the day that he was shot. Daddy was on the bin lorry, and they shouted his name before they shot him. And they did. <laughs> they didn't just do it once, but, so they didn't. Um, they had shot him nine times and twice in the head. So they had. <clears throat> It makes me angry. I never got to know my mummy. I was deprived of her when I was growing up. She was the best in the world. At the family home of bandsman Richard Feiss in Cardiff, floral tributes Thank have been you. arriving throughout the morning. Friends said Richard, who was 22, had lived for music and had transferred to Deal only three weeks ago to get more experience of orchestral work. Quite frequently I'd hear him practicing and it sounded really lovely. It stopped to listen. But the murder was recently reinvestigated and a new report found that rather than trying to rob the young English soldier, local people had tried to save him. For his family back in Brighton, that has brought some consolation. Sorry. Forty years later, the truth about what happened has finally been revealed. We was always told that they came and tried to take his gun off him, and that never happened. And the way it was given to us, he was on his own, and, and that wasn't the case. And so he knew that he was being given the help. He wasn't just left to die. And to me, that just made a huge, huge difference to find that somebody really wanted to help him. And a lot of people did help him. I think my husband dying the way he did, it's rather like somebody dying in a war. He was a very good and a very, very gentle man, and I always felt that somebody so kind and gentle as him, it was extraordinary that he should have to die in such a violent way. What had Tony Berry done to deserve this end? What, what had Roberta Wakeham done to deserve this end? This is no military action. This is a cowardly terrorist act. I had just left home to go to the shop, and when I came back, my mother was gone. Your mother was gone, and uh, the uh, a few days later, uh, you got the news that she had been murdered, and or at least disappeared, as the as the expression was in those days. No, we we got had her purse returned to us with her wedding ring in it and her engagement ring, and uh, we didn't know for twenty two years what happened to my mother. <laughs> 